Okay, so here we go, story time. We've got to the point where Chaya fell down the waterfall. So did Noir, but they lost Noir in the water. Um, she's not quite sure where she she is. They lost Nilan in the soldier hunt, so he's somewhere in the jungle. Uh, Chaya thought she was going to die and drown after saving Noir, but something pulled her out of the water and is carrying her. And we found out at the end that was Ananda, the elephant. Somehow he's come back and saved her life. So hopefully they will find the next two children shortly. Chapter 27. Ananda, she whispered, it was you who pulled me out of the river. So the king's men hadn't found him after all. He must have been roaming the jungle at all times, looking for them, and he'd saved her life. She smiled gratefully at him, closed her eyes and drifted off to sleep again. When she came to, Ananda was still standing over her. She flexed her fingers and felt some of the strength come back to her limbs. Chaya sat up shakily, shakily and pulled herself to her feet. It was evening, the sky was darkening and the jungle was full of shrieks of crickets. We need to find them, Ananda, she said. She looked along the, blank, the banks of the river, but no flash of red dress caught her eye. Noir must be somewhere, and we need to find Neil. She sank down onto her knees and buried her face into her lap. Who was she fooling? The jungle rose up around her, a vast swath of darkness and light, and Neil and Noir were two pinpricks lost somewhere in it. Something wrapped itself like a blanket around the, her middle and once again she found herself lifted up in Ananda's trunk and onto his broad back. She felt the warmth of him like an embrace and the lull of his the lull of his giant footsteps as he thumped his way along the riverbank. She rubbed her back she rubbed the back of her hand over her eyes. Noir she called out. Ananda padded on, stepping over weeds and through flat ground. Noir can you hear me? She urged Ananda on. She can't be too far off. Noir! Neil! Do you hear me? Her shouts echoed through the jungle. Her kivet stopped its tracks and then scuttled away, its golden bo body quivering in the waning light. Obviously some sort of jungle animal. Where were they? And where were the king's men? Would they hear her? Noir! Ananda lifted up his head and trumpeted. The sound boomed through the forest and was met by a whispering of trees and as owls woke up and hooted, followed by another cry. Softer. Human. There was movement ahead. Chaya squinted into the gloom. Something was coming towards them. And there in the distance, framed by a giant splint inward tree, was Noir. I thought I'd never find you again, said Noir, hobbling towards Chaya. Her eyes were swollen and her face was streaked with dirt. First Neelan, then you. A fresh outpouring of tears coursed down her face. Chai jumped off Ananda and hugged Noir. I'm so sorry, I didn't know. Remember, she was scared of water and she didn't know, but she pushed her into the waterfall. Know what? Noir sniffed, her, sniffed, her, sniffed and rubbed her eyes. She looked warm through. About the water, that, you know, that I'm a coward who's afraid of everything. Noir laughed before her body was wrecked by a sob. I shouldn't have pushed you. Never mind. It saved us, didn't it? Otherwise we'd be with the king by now, being put to the sword for helping a criminal escape. Still, I'm sorry. I know it's not enough, though. Noir shook her head. Do you think they've got Neela? I hope not. He might have escaped. He was ahead of us. Neela can be quick when he wants to be. What do we do now? We look for Neil. But... If we stay here, the king's men will find us. And if we go too far, we won't find Nil. Noir started to sob again. Oh, Chaya, it's hopeless, isn't it? No, it isn't. There was no need to make things worse than it was. We need to stay strong, Noir. Chaya couldn't navigate the jungle like Nil did. She had no idea where they were. How big is this jungle? asked Noir. Uh, not very. She felt terrible for lying. But now wasn't the time to reveal that the jungle covered nearly half of Siberia. We can do this. Come on, you ride Ananda. We'll find somewhere to settle for the night and then look for Neil in the morning, okay? Noir nodded. It's a good thing we found Ananda, she said. She smiled up at him but didn't touch him. At least she was using his name now. Ananda kneeled and Noir clambered onto him. 
Chaya led them away from the river and into the trees. The jungle was much cooler now. The sun was setting and the gaps between the trees darkened into hollows. Chaya and Noir swapped faces as they went on. Do you wish, said Noir from where she was, said Noir from where she was, walking along, there's an extra word in there, munching on a piece of grass, that you could go back and undo everything. What kind of silly question's that? Well, think about it. You would be safe. Nil would be safe. Your father would continue as before. Everything would be the same. But Vijay would lose his legs and never walk again. I'm tired. Do I have to answer these questions? I'm tired too, but it passes the time. I just wondered, that's all. You don't have to answer. And then Noir added under her breath, especially since you never admit you're wrong. Chai ignored her. The truth was, she wasn't sure anymore. They swapped again as they looked for a place to settle for the night. After a while, Chai led Ananda to a halt under a canopy of trees with a springy bed of ferns underneath. This looks comfortable enough. Noir looked around sadly as if she, as she got off Ananda. We can't even have a fire without Neelan. We've got Ananda, said Chaya. No animal would come close with him protecting us. She hoped that was true anyway. I have something to tell you, said Noir. I think I'm dying. Chaya raised an eyebrow. You could be a bit more sympathetic. Noir pulled back her sleeve and showed her her arm. Look at all these pink spots. I have them all over me. Noir, I hate to tell you the obvious, but we're in a jungle. Those are insect bikes. Noir pulled a face. That's horrible. How come you don't have them? Or nil? Of course I have them. But I would but why would it bother me? That's the least of our worries right now. She looked around the trees. Let's find something to eat. I wish I could climb tre trees like you, said Noir, looking up into the branches of a thick tree. I'll show you soon. I promise. Just need to get something to eat now. I mean, there, there's a prickly fruit up there in the tree, she pointed up to the branches. There, look. Chaya looked up, following Noir's finger. It's a jackfruit. That's the best fruit ever. Noir smiled and sat cross-legged on the ferns as Chaya shimmied up the tree to pick the juiciest jackfruit she could find. They might as well enjoy the moment, because tomorrow they had the impossible task of finding Neil in the gigantic jungle. I'll do the next one. Chapter 28. Noir! Chai whispered and shook her. Dawn had broken and shafts of light thumbed from between the trees. Noir moaned and stretched. It's morning already. Shh! Chai looked around. I think they're coming. We need to get going. Noir grimaced and staggered to her feet. We'll both ride Ananda. Come on. Chai dragged her stiff body up behind Noir as they swayed softly as Ananda moved off. From behind them came a faint hum like a swarm of moths. Something about the sound, the puffs, the dust drifting through the tension of the air, told Chaya something big was coming towards them. But Ananda was doing a good job of running away from it all, as he hurtled through the trees at top speed. I think we've lost them, shouted Chaya, slowing Ananda down. I don't hear anything now. You know, once it was all over, we should give Ananda a huge treat. What's an elephant treat? I don't know, Chaya glanced behind them. Sugar cane, maybe? You know so much stuff, said Noir, as they rode under a binan tree. It's trailing leaves brushing against their legs. How did you learn these things? Chaya shrugged. It's just stuff. Everybody knows them, she noticed Noir's frown. You're different. You're new here. You'll get to know these things soon enough. Noir was silent for a bit. I thought they were coming... You were going to laugh at me, she said. That's that's what the old you would have done. Something whizzed past Chai's ear and an arrow stabbed into a tree. Noir screamed. Chai tapped Ananda on the side as he sped up, thundering through the trees. Another arrow came whistling past, this time ripping through one of Noir's sleeves. Oh no, they're here, they're here, Noir screamed. Calm down, Noir, said Chai. She needed to think something was wasn't as it should be. There was no sound of galloping. Were the king's men now on foot? Noir screamed and pointed behind them. Look at that. What are those? They were squelching through muddy patches where several man-sized water lizards were glistening, glistening blackly. Ananda just stepped over the scaly creatures as though 
and their whiplash tails. They're called water monitors and they're horrible, said Jaya as they zipped away from the creatures. She turned back and looked in front of her and screamed, Duck! Noir! They both bobbed down just in time to avoid a thick horizon. Horizontal branch was whistling towards them. Better keep her eyes in front, said Chaya. Noir nodded, her eyes fixed ahead. Ananda suddenly slowed down, even though Chaya tapped him to urge on. But he eased right down to a plod. What's the matter, Ananda? She said to Noir. But then when she looked to where Noir was silently pointing, standing on the forest floor ahead of them was a man with a bow. His arrow trained straight at them. I'm going to leave it there for the day. So, Chaya found Noir with Ananda, but they are now being chased by the king's men who've got their bows and arrows out. And they're potentially going to be shot with an arrow right now, unless they think of something quick. So, I'll see you tomorrow.